Pastor Johanna, I hope you can hear me. Senior Overseer Lucas, you're welcome. Can you hear me? Uh -huh. I hope you can hear me, Senior Overseer Lucas. We also have Shangelao joining us. Overseer Lucas, you're my Amen, name. amen. I can, hear, I, can, I can hear your blessed Senior Bishop. Amen. Thank you so much. And a blessed afternoon to all the couples in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let me let me allow them to answer answer you. Welcome all the blessed couples. Overseer Lucas is welcoming you. Amen, you. amen. And uh, Shangel Shangelao, you're welcome. And uh, yes. Wonderful. So let me ask uh, Pastor Sanil to pray for us, and then we we get the ball rolling. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, thank you, and we come before you in your holy presence with a repentant heart and in the name of Jesus and with the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we are privileged. You have given us this privilege even to uh, listen to such beautiful wisdoms and instruction which pertains to our marriage. So Father, may the spirit of wisdom, understanding and discernment speak to us and counsel us. I cover this meeting in the blood of Jesus and I submit under the authority of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Senior Bishop. <coughs> what do you say thank you in, in Hindi? <laughs> Dhanivad. 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 Yes. Amen. All right. Well, Spasibo. Yeah. What do you say in Russian? Spasibo. Spas Spasibo. Spasibo. Okay. Spasibo. Jof yeah. Joffrey Omuga. Nancy Magnoni, you're welcome, Nancy. All right, uh, and Pastor Alice, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us, Pastor Alice. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Geoffrey Amu Omuga, can you hear us? You're also welcome. If you can hear us, please let us know. And okay. yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. Thank you. And uh, Pastor Shangala is joining us also. All right. Uh, how are we doing? How are we growing marital wise? That's a question to us all. How are we growing now? Of course, we have uh, this is our Christ and that family fellowship, marriage fellowship for married couples and couples in courtship. Uh, we gather here periodically, fellowship, encourage one another in the word. Uh, yes, my name is Bishop Dr. Julius Quedi, as my name states there. I'm currently in Namibia. Uh, for those that, that have joined us today for the first time, like Kinga and some new names I see. So we'd like to fellowship with you. So the ground rules are, we, we, we gather here to fellowship. Feel free to speak to ask questions, to contribute, to say something. We are here to fellowship and learn from one another. Amen. So I should not just be doing the talking by myself. Uh, I invite you to, if you want to read a scripture, please, you are very much welcome to read a scripture. If you want to share um, a lesson, please, you are most welcome. Amen. And so let us interact and build one another. All right, so we begin with uh, um, how, <clears throat> how has the Lord been uh, teaching us in our marriages? How have we been growing in our marriages, in our homes? How have we been growing? What has the Lord been teaching you? 
Hallelujah. What has the Lord been teaching you and how have you been growing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Humility. The Lord has been teaching me how to be humble, like in marriage, and have understanding towards um, your spouse. Humility and understanding. That's a very powerful one. Eh? <clears throat> That's a very powerful one, Sister Abby. Humility. You said humility and understanding, yeah? Yes. Yeah. That's a very powerful one. At the, at, the, at the Singles Fellowship, we're discussing the, the topic of spiritual brokenness, which inculcates the topic of um, humility. It's really at the center. Very powerful. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, very, very powerful. Very important. Anybody else would like to share with us? <clears throat> Does anybody else want to share with us? Yes, I will share my story. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kinga. And uh, uh, the Lord, uh, I don't know how to call it, but he saved me uh, from new age and practices and meditations. And all of this, uh, I think, uh, in July 25th, the previous year. So I have been walking with the Lord for uh, almost a year. And uh, I got married uh, uh, on th this year uh, in autumn. So it's been maybe a three months, a, a little bit more. Half of, yeah, more than three months already. Uh, but uh, uh, my husband is not... Uh, he doesn't believe in God and mm -hmm. it's really, really um, difficult journey for me because uh, when I want to go deeper into knowing God, there's, you know, this, uh, the Lord was showing me how to uh, separate myself from him and, and really um, know the, the boundaries between where is my time with God, where is my time with my husband and, and how to uh, he was teaching me wisdom how to uh, talk to him uh, in, in not you know uh, this way that trying to teach everything about God and you know telling him to believe and pointing fingers but to really, uh, he was teaching me a lot of wisdom this time, how to be obedient to him, mm -hmm. how to humble myself, um, how to express everything that I feel in a proper way. And yes, but it's really difficult journey and I need a lot of grace in that. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is full of it and uh, he's really merciful i also struggled um during that time when i um i started to seek god more and more and when i, I was lost in sin as well uh in lustful thoughts with other men because i saw that uh you know the word of god says that uh, you know uh, jesus can save everyone but no, and I was a little bit angry uh, and disappointed during a, lo a lot of time um, towards God, but uh, he brought me to humility and, and he showed me that I need to really dedicate myself to prayer more because that's what I've been abandoning during all this time. And I'm really blessed to be here because I think that God wants to really fix our marriage and uh, re, re, make a rehab uh, to really humble me and, and, and to show me how to be obedient even when I don't like what is happening and all the circumstances we're in right now. 
let me so congratulate you. You are still a newlywed, correct? Three months. You are still a new, new, newlywed. Yes, yes. So I, I congratulate you. <clears throat> Thank you. Despite the circumstances of your marriage, I congratulate you. Uh, Thank you. Yes. And uh, I know that the Lord Amen. is to... Senior Bishop, you... Yes. I'm sorry. But yes. just... just... <clears throat> oh, I cannot hear you well, Pastor Samuel. Please uh, unmute yourself. Uh, Pastor Samir, I think there's a problem with the network. Yes, so I congratulate you. Welcome to Married Life. It's a very exciting journey ahead of you. Amen. There is indeed a lot to learn. <clears throat> there's a lot of transformation coming. And um, as it is for all of us, yeah? as it is for all of us, uh, indeed, you're, even though your your challenge is a little bit different that your husband is not yet born again but we it pretty much we, we, we our journey is pretty much the same yeah the challenges we face with married with with christian couples as christian couples is the same challenges that to for the most part that you face uh, with your husband and uh we have a lot to learn from one another and indeed there is a lot of learning that uh, is coming and that the Lord will definitely help. <clears throat> All that is needed is humility, indeed, and faith. Faith. Don't forget about faith. Uh, thank you so much for sharing with us your, your testimony, and we look forward to uh, learning more of you and to learning more from you as well, uh, Kinga. And uh, anybody else would like to share? <clears throat> For me personally, I'm on the new journey of parenthood. Uh, I'm a new father. Our son is five months old. Uh, so we've been on this five months old journey <laughs> of, of parenthood. And I, I can say it's, it has been an ex exciting journey. So far, so good. <clears throat> Our son is so full of joy. Um, very lovely. Every, every, every day, I think to myself, he's truly a bundle of joy. <laughs> he's a true... Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Indeed, he knows that he is coming. And my father is very... As a, <laughs> and as a bishop too. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where the people got that word from, bundle of joy, but it is true. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Samuel, oh, hey. you were saying something before you, you disappeared. Oh, yes. I was just saying that. She just came and she said the marital, this will be the right her. Uh, so just. I, I did not hear you well. There's something wrong with. Either my network or yours. I hope everybody else can hear you well. Because for me, it's breaking. For me, the same. Okay. It's also breaking for Kinga. Please type, Pastor Sanil. Okay, somebody has written here. All right. Thank you, Cesar. All right. Um, all right. Anybody else want to share with us? Your journey, your marital journey, what the Lord has been teaching you. Amen. What has the Lord been teaching you? I Let me call somebody. To share. Yes, please. Uh, you want to share, Pastor Sanil? Like Pastor Sanil's network is uh, on another level. Okay. Uh, Senior Vasya Lucas, don't you want to share with us?
Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless the senior bishop and uh, the married couples on the platform. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Amen. Uh, we bless the Lord. Yes. We bless the Lord so much for everything. And uh, currently, I've been on leave. I've been on leave for two weeks, of course. We thank God for protecting us, for keeping us. Uh, I've just realized that I, I, I still need to do more. I still need to do more on in the area of uh, communication with my family, spending more quality time. You know, at times you might think that I've given them quality time, but then if you listen from them, it will uh, come out uh, almost zero. <laughs> you haven't done anything. So it's a matter of really uh, humbling oneself, as it was yeah. said. It's a matter of humbling oneself and uh, try to do more. If somebody, if you give, uh, if you give somebody something and that person is not satisfied, so you you should try to 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 to, to do better yes. in order to achieve the satisfaction of that somebody. Mm -hmm. So I think also I'm one of those people who need to work hard also on my family to give them enough quality time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, currently, my wife is on uh, on a holiday because of the COVID nineteen. So I will be resuming work on Monday. Mm -hmm. I feel I, I I still think I got an opportunity mm -hmm. to to give them quality time to spend quality time with them. Since uh, she's on holiday, she's at home, at home the whole time. So I think when I knock off, yeah. I think I can do better. There's still uh, room for improvement. Amen. Amen. That is just what I realized. Amen. That is very powerful. That is very powerful. Senior Overseer Lucas. In fact, uh, now you now you make me think. I think we should all be. We 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 can we can all go on and share areas in which we need to improve. Eh? When you began to when you began to speak, you you remind me of um, uh, when 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 my wife told me after is that after four months of our, of our marriage. That's when I learned that I've only just begun. <laughs> after four months, that's when she said. Now she began to see change in me. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing, Pastor Overseer Lucas. Pastor Alice, would you like to share with us? Pastor Alice, I hope you can hear. Amen. I can hear you. Hallelujah. Um, uh, I've been learning about uh, myself personally and the things that I need to change, basically. Yes. That's what I've been learning. Uh -huh. um, the things that the Lord is warning me not to do and carry myself in a different way uh -huh. so that I'm also shining the light of Christ. Um, and also to, of course, how you communicate. Uh -huh. So yeah, that has been the one that I've been focusing on. Yes. good communication and then now i know the lord will also help everything else come into place amen, amen. thank you i think i think i have also have quite a lot of uh, communication to learn uh, <clears throat> i also have quite a lot of communication techniques to learn um and and i bless the lord that I'm not working these days, so I'm home most of the time. Am I? I'm home most of the time, and uh, I'm also learning now to communicate more, opening up more. My wife would, would put it. Uh, one time, one time I came home, 
how long have I been gone? I've been gone for a few hours. <laughs> when, when I came back home and she asked me, how was your day? How was your time out? What did I say? <laughs> I said, nothing much. <laughs> so my wife asked me how the day was and uh, what happened with the person with somebody that I was uh, spending time with. And so when I came home, she asked me and I said, oh, nothing much happened. And she was like, come on, I've been home all day. <laughs> and you were out. How can you just say, you know, nothing much? <laughs> and so I, I also had quite a lot, a lot of transformation to undergo in the area of communication. So I'm learning, I'm learning. I'm learning to articulate myself. I'm learning to, uh, to, to, to talk about things that I don't, I don't think need to be talked about. I mean, just some details of, uh, of events that, that happened. And I think I'm making Amen. progress. I think I'm making progress. <laughs> I am glad Mama Bishop spoke. She did not just let that one go. <laughs> yeah, she did not let it slide. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, she did not let it slide. Yes. Also, Senior Bishop Julius, I want to share my shortcomings. Yes. Me too. Mm -hmm. um, yes, when it comes to communication mm -hmm. within the marriage or you're in courtship, yes. I have been, you know, especially with man, I guess man can understand, mm -hmm. man are our colleague. Yeah. Well, call it when when they work they don't want anything you know they give like the attention is only on work Definitely. and forget about you know like you know like this wife is calling texting and all those things mm -hmm. so i'm battling this thing very strong especially in the courtship when, when you're not in marriage yes after marriage surely it's a different story you know mm -hmm. you're bound to <laughs> do some duties so I'm battling this very strongly. And I know, I know that this is my shortcoming. This is my weakness that I must give time, not just to my, you know, uh, the wife to be, but also to my family members. I like that also. So I am learning this, how to, you know, in, in when it comes to busy schedule, when you're doing, like ministry and all this thing, like studying so many things, working, how to give time, you know, to everybody so that everybody would be satisfied. And as a senior overseer said that sometimes you give time <laughs> and you think it is, you're doing your best. <laughs> you think that they are satisfied now, but then all of a sudden you realize that, no, it's nothing. They have a different definition of time. You haven't begun yet. <laughs> Right. So, yes, that's my shortcoming. That's what I'm learning, Senior Bishop Julius. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to share with us their experience? Experience. You know, we have a friend who was with us in, in, in Russia. His name is Mr. Wallingford. When he would do uh, marriage counseling, he would just. Um, invite the person that they are going to fellowship with and he would say just come and share with us your challenges and we are also going to share with you our challenges so that you see that uh, we both have uh, growing to do amen uh, there is no uh, there is no married couple that uh, are perfect that have it all together that have no need for growth uh, there is Indeed, plenty of growth to do for all of us. Pastor Shangala, would you like to share with us? All right. Uh, in the absence of that, of anybody to add. Uh, Praise. Yes. Yes, Pastor Shangala. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed Bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, praise the Lord, the blessed couples. Amen. 
yesterday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, um, Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, I thank the Lord so much. Amen. And so I actually got married last year. That was September. And um, it has been a quite an amazing journey Amen. with a lot of uh, lessons. Mm-hmm. And in this journey, really, I learned one thing uh, that is um, how to be patient. Patient. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, yes, I was taught a lot about patience. And uh, yes, please. Uh, I think a lot. So, yes, I think a lot so much that uh, I, I don't know if maybe I could have not been married by this time. I, I would have not uh, learned this because there, there are things you know that. Uh, and, Please repeat that. There are things that. Can you please say that again? Uh, we just need your patience. patience. There are times that there are things. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. You said there are times that. Uh, Yes, we are listening. Praise the Lord, blessed Bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Amen. Yes, there are times that you know when you expect just you know your 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 couples to do things mm-hmm. that uh, you think they will just be done immediately. Mm-hmm. I mean your spouse rather. Sorry, please. Yes. <clears throat> and then. Uh, Sometimes you'll be shocked, but uh, that this thing won't be done the, the time you expected it to be done exactly. And so just have to be a little bit patient. Mm. And yes. Amen. Amen. That's a powerful lesson. <laughs> Patience, that's a very powerful lesson there that you are learning. <laughs> Oh yes. Amen. It's it's one of the key lessons in marriage. Patience. Patience and endurance. Amen. We had uh, last time we were discussing about the five love languages. And we covered, I think we covered two. We covered words of affirmation and we covered quality time. Yeah. And before that we discussed uh, the topic of uh, marriage covenant. We discussed the topic of marriage covenant. <clears throat> and we also discussed conflict resolution. We spent quite some time discussing the topic of conflict resolution. We discussed the steps <clears throat> to solving marital conflicts. We discussed um, some basic mechanisms that are involved in um, conflicts, that are involved in conflicts. We discussed the fear dance, we discussed the crazy love cycle. We discussed <clears throat> communication. We spent some time discussing communication. Of course, under that theme, uh, conflict resolution under the theme of communication. And so now we found ourselves with um, the five love languages. So can we just do uh, a bit of recap? I know we have some new people that are joining us today, like uh, Sister Kinga and, uh, and a number of other people that are joining us for the first time. Uh, but I know that people like uh, Senior Overseer Lucas have been here for some time. Pastor Alice has been here for some time. Pastor Ryan also has been here for some time. Pastor Sanil, <clears throat> Sister Abby, and uh, who else has been here for some time? Shange also has been here for a while. 
and uh, Pastor Anna also. So can we just do a little bit of recap on the five love languages, quality time and words of affirmation. Amen. And then we go, we go on to discuss uh, the other five, the other uh, three love languages. Amen. Can we do that? <clears throat> so let us just do a little uh, recap on the five love languages. On the, on the Amen. Amen. time and words of affirmation. Yes, please. Amen to that, Senior Bishop James. Very powerful. Yes. Please proceed. Amen. And um, quality time. What is it? What is it? And what does it entail? Let us recap on this one a bit. What is quality time? What does it involve? I hope everybody uh, has understood my question. What is quality time? What does it involve? <clears throat> um, do you need like um, like a personal definition? Yeah, just discussion, whatever your, your, your point of view is. Um, well, my, my point of view for quality time is um, um, expressing like your love, um, giving um, your undivided attention mm -hmm. to your spouse with no distractions. Yes. I mean, undivided, undistracted time spent with the spouse. Uh -huh. Yes, please. Uh, anybody else who wants to weigh in on quality time? <clears throat> I, I would see quality time in marriage fellowship as a time wherein you build the purpose of your marriage because there is a purpose of marriage and you invest in that. You keep the purpose alive and feed on that. So that becomes a quality time, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Time to invest in the marriage, yeah? Uh, the purpose of marriage. It could be... Yes. praising God you know sometimes you just come and you're just speaking like nonsense right? like uh, <laughs> you know worldly things it doesn't like it's not a good quality time to be very frank yes yeah so purpose is like talking about you know yes. to expand the kingdom of God like that just an example yeah I, mean, I, I like the uh, I like the this this catchphrase quality time is quantity time what does that mean to you? Quality time is quantity time. How do you understand that? Please, everybody, feel free. Uh, Dolph, Dolphin IoT, welcome. You are, you are welcome to contribute. Overseer Amalia, Elia, please, you're welcome to contribute. The Godly Princess, you're also welcome to contribute. Praise the Lord, bless us, Senior Bishop. Amen. Please uh, uh, forgive me, I can't really participate, but I'm tuning in. Eh? All right. Mm -hmm. Rosemary Makulo, Gael, Pastor Gael, please <clears throat> contribute. Uh, we have Kinga also, we have uh, Geoffrey Omuga. Please feel free to chip in. Teresa, Sister Teresa, Pastor Anna, please. What do you understand by quality time is? Quantity time. And everybody, you're free to contribute. What does that mean to you? How do you spend quality time with your spouse? Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Don't be afraid, blessed people. <laughs> you can never be wrong <laughs> with these answers. You can never be wrong. We are learning from each other. How do you understand by quality time is quantity time? How do you spend quality time with your spouse? Yes, Pastor Shangara, did you want to say something? Did you want to, co to contribute to this discussion? Kinga, Abasia Lucas, Pastor Alex, Pastor Ryan, please feel free. 
Rosemary Mapulo, the Godly Princess. There's a lot of people here. Walter Hillary, welcome. You are also welcome to contribute. We are discussing uh, quality time, quality time in marriage. My wife the says. Yes. My wife says quality time is time away from technology with your spouse. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that relates to me so much. <laughs> That's a lie. So if you're using your phone, it's not quality time. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Could you guys? Yes. Amen. I think it's the time that uh, two couples spend uh, spend time together and they really enjoy each other's company. Amen. Yes. Spending time with your spouse and enjoying each other's company. Wonderful. Yes. Do, do, do you want to add more or you want to end there? To end there. Okay. <laughs> yes. Kinga, you wanted to you, you, were, you, you were adding something? Yes, the first thing that I've been thinking uh, was uh, that the quality time has to be regular. Mm -hmm. So when we, when, for example, when we don't spend the quality time together, mm -hmm. uh, then we cannot communicate uh, good. So it has to be regular to not let all the responsibilities and uh, all the stresses in life we face to really, uh, you know, uh, uh, so basically not to let all the circumstances and stresses to distract us from coming uh, together and, and spending time together. Indeed. Nice. Indeed. That you, you have to allow to not allow things to distract you. And, and that's the whole point of quality time, isn't it? Keep away distractions. As, as my wife said, putting away especially gadgets and uh, paying undivided attention. I remember when we started to uh, I think maybe date or something like that. We, we or no, we were already engaged. Uh -huh. We started to do this uh, practice. So for 20 minutes uh, for each other, one is talking for 20 minutes and the other one is just listening. And then after we switch, Mm -hmm. And I remember it, it was really nice because we could, uh, you know, express each other without interrupting. Mm -hmm. And we could hear uh, a lot of things that we didn't even knew that our partner would think. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a really blessed uh, uh, practice and, and it really helped to understand each other more at that time because it was really hard for us. You, you discovered a lot of, about your spouse, yeah? You learned a lot about your spouse, your husband. And about myself as well, how, how I want to respond all the time to him without even taking the time to listen. Mm. Because as a woman, we like to talk a lot. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it's, sometimes it's unnecessary. <laughs> And uh, yes, so uh, I really learned a lot about myself, how, how I cannot, you know, uh, uh, shut up basically uh, some, sometimes. So yes, it was a really great practice to do this, you know, and allow a person to really talk about uh, himself. So yeah. That's wonderful. I don't know, how did you manage to pull off 20 minutes in a go? <laughs> in one go, 20. So for 20, for 20 minutes, you're just speaking, your spouse is listening, correct? Uh, 
Yes, I read it in a book and uh, and uh, and I was like, let's practice it. And yes, it's like twenty. We, you can like make a clock, you know, for twenty minute heat speaking, and after a clock, uh, uh, another partner switches, and then he's speaking mm-hmm. without interrupting. And it was really hard at first, yeah. but then when we practiced uh, like a day another day third day it was uh, a little bit easier so yeah practice does make perfect you build new habits wonderful that's a that's a very good exercise and 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 that is the true meaning of uh, quality time is quantity time indeed it takes time uh it takes an investment of time uh some people say even five minutes spending five minutes every day after work but i think Five minutes is not enough. Uh, and so having a reasonable amount of time, like just 20 minutes or one hour, I think one hour is a very good time to aim for on a, a day as a couple to sit and, uh, and share and discuss and listen. Yes. And, uh, and of course, we can spend quality time anywhere at home, we can go to a restaurant. But it's it's important to make it as inexpensive as possible. It doesn't have to be involved going to restaurants and doing fancy things. Because it's all about spending time together. Even if it's just going for a walk, <clears throat> if the house is noisy, or just yeah, being at home in the bed bedroom just talking. It doesn't have to be an expensive exercise. Yes. And uh, quality time it is indeed a time when we get to connect. And uh, I like what Kinga said that you, 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 you discover a lot about yourself. Yeah? And that is the whole purpose, that you discover a lot about yourself and discover also a lot about your, um, your spouse. It's supposed to be a journey of discovery. Um, and I think one mistake that we do as couples, we, we stop learning about each other. Somewhere along the way, we stop learning, we become too complacent, we become too used to each other. And then uh, we become too annoyed with each other. We stop learning and discovering each other. So quality time <clears throat> is that good place that to always bring us back to discovering about our spouses. And uh, it also allows us to discuss very important uh, topics, to discuss very important things about marriage, to reach out the cause for your marriage and discuss um, the future, and make some important plans. Amen. Uh, does anybody want to add to this? Quality time. Quality time. It is a very deliberate moment. Um, and, it, and it allows us to reprioritize our marriage. Amen. And what about words of affirmation? <clears throat> what about words of affirmation? What do you think about words of affirmation? What do you guys think of words of affirmation? All right. I think I'll just have to talk to myself. eh? All right. So we have words of affirmation, which are words of encouragement, words of of appreciation, um, words that allow our spouses to feel loved, to feel recognized, to feel important. And, and so when we discuss the five love languages, we are really talking about uh, what makes you feel loved. And, uh, and so there are these then five languages as we discuss our quality time, words of affirmation, gifts of uh, gifts giving or gifts receiving, uh, physical touch and acts of service. And so the five love languages are supposed to be, are designed to help us as spouses to learn, uh, to identify what do we respond to best when our spouse uh, show us their love, yeah? Uh, If your love language is quality time, then that means when your spouse spends time with you, makes you feel loved, makes you feel important to that person, makes you feel prioritized. When your spouse, when your love language is uh, words of affirmation, 
And then uh, that means your, your, your spouse encourages you, pampers you with, uh, uh, with words of affirmation, such as, I love you, you look good today. Thank you for taking out the dishes. Thank you for making the bed. Um, and just um, saying all those nice things that make your spouse feel appreciated. And we now have the gifts, gifts giving, gifts receiving, as well as physical touch and acts of service. Before I go to those, let me just say this, that um, as we discussed the, 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 the love languages, we said that the love languages, as it were, they are a set of expectations. They're shaped by our expectations. What makes us feel loved, whether it's quality time, or words of affirmation, these are sets of expectations that, uh, that, that, that we have developed over a period of time, which are shaped by, especially by our background, family background, by our education, by our social status, by our friends, family, and people in our circles, life experiences, by you know, things that we encounter every day, television programs, social media, things that we read, uh, even our spiritual experience. But these things, they shape our expectations. They shape our expectation of uh, what it means to be loved. The way our parents uh, treated us when we were young. It leaves an imprint on our mind, which becomes an expectation that you have now for your spouse to say, uh, if my, my spouse is to show me love, then I would really like it if she treats me the way, for example, my mother was, was treating me or such. And um, we said that five love languages are of two kinds. There is the receiving and the giving part, meaning uh, what you like to receive to feel loved by your spouse. Is it quality time? Is it extra service? Is it uh, gift giving? And the same can also be love language of giving, meaning when you do this for your spouse, it, it makes you feel a sense of purpose, makes you feel a sense of accomplishment, a, a sense of worth, amen, <clears throat> and, and a sense of usefulness. And, um, and uh, that's 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 where the importance of the five of the five love languages of so the love languages come in. Um, now, let's talk about uh, receiving gifts. Some people feel better loved. Maybe you, maybe it's you, when they receive gifts. I think most women, some women, this is especially their love language, receiving gifts, where when it's birthday time. You better not forget that birthday. And you should buy some cake, buy some greetings card, I mean, or a birthday card, or the anniversary. You should remember the anniversary and should remember to buy some nice gifts because they just feel um, appreciated. They feel uh, prioritized. They feel like, uh, yes, you really love them if you remember to buy them a few gifts, some flowers here. Um, what else? It doesn't have to be very expensive. Sometimes it's, it can be just going out into the field and picking up some flowers or uh, taking some, some paper and cutting it in a nice artwork and uh, making that a gift <laughs> to your spouse. Some, some spouses respond to that and it makes them feel very much appreciated. Um, for me, receiving gifts is not my thing. <laughs> receiving gifts is not really my thing. I could care less if I get a gift or not. But I think um, I, I value more um, quality time and, um, and which one there, and, and words of affirmation. That, those ring more to me. Um, so you have you have gifts you have receiving gifts, and I think there is no marriage that can survive indeed without receiving gifts. Yeah, even if uh, even if it doesn't have to be ex an expensive exercise, there is no amount of marriage that there is no marriage that can survive without an amount of giving. 
um, love in itself is giving. Yeah? Love is being selfless as it, is, as it is. It entails giving. And you usually realize that when you really love somebody, you are really into somebody, and you, when you really want to appreciate somebody, I think in all cultures globally, we all have a way of demonstrating our love by giving, dem demonstrating our appreciation by giving. And how much more then should we do that in our, um, in our marriages? Uh, even, if, even if your spouse does not like grand, grand uh, gifts, big gifts or out of this world gifts, they would always appreciate something. When you go to the shop and you come back with a chocolate, uh, even if it's not very big, even if it's not a wow thing, just something to show the person that, yes, I'm thinking about you, you're on my mind, and uh, I love you. Amen. Uh, does anybody want to, to end up on this, to contribute to this, uh, to this topic of uh, um, receiving gifts? Is anybody having a spouse that receives gifts? That receiving gift is their love language. What is what has been your experience? I guess. Uh, yeah. As for me, as what I have seen and understood. Yeah. When you give a gift, like. Hey, uh, you... nyonya bando zangu like shit. Yes, uh, Pastor Samuel. <laughs> yeah. So I was saying that, especially when it comes to gift, like a surprise gift is the, you know, woman really love that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the best gift for them when it, give, when it comes to gift is like sweet words because yes. women, you know, they are caught up with words. <laughs> you, you, you cannot give like, for example, you don't have money, you don't have nothing. But if you can give sweet words, uh, because women are prone to these sweet words. <laughs> so I think, you know, <laughs> because in the Garden of Eden, an enemy was trying with sweet words, you know, very powerful fruit, please eat it. You know, it's nice, wonderful wisdom. <laughs> and she just, she was just drawn to that. <laughs> She came in the words of the enemy. So as I see, like the word, the word of a man, you know, it's very, it's, I guess, one of the best gifts that man can give to a woman if he doesn't have money. <laughs> to buy no money, the words are enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amen. Makes her feel very much appreciated. Oh, yes. Amen. Welcome, Pastor Jacqueline, Pastor Emily. Amen. Amen. Uh, you found us discussing about uh, five love languages. Uh, we were recapping on quality time. We recapped on um, words of affirmation. We are now talking about receiving gifts. And we are going on to talk about physical touch and acts of service. And I was just asking a question. Um, I was, I was talking about um, receiving gifts. I said, who of us have a spouse who's, for whom receiving gifts is their love language? And what has been your experience? <clears throat> and we can really uh, this, say that of all the other um, love languages. Which of these love languages is your spouse's? And what has been your experience? Your journey of discovering your spouse's love language. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, my experience is that um, for me, I work away from from home. Yes. And I think um, I don't know. I don't know really how to put it though. But I think one of my wife's Love language is also receiving gifts. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because whenever I go home, she always, <laughs> she's always expecting for either for a gift, <laughs> either a flower or just anything. And yeah. no, normally when I go home, I think um, we should be, this is with most women that they replicate like what they want you to do. Uh, they do it for you. So when I go home, yes, um, I find that she has done um, a lot. She has bought sweets, probably. Oh, that, that is uh, actually my wife's um, five love languages, and it's 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 so important to her. A card. Because did, did you say a card? Yes, like she, she just write a card for you as ah. a gift when you come home. She just gives you the card. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so it, it is. Um, it, it is um, important to her, I think, mm -hmm. so yeah. much, and. Um, <clears throat> I think when most of the times when you you know just forget to do something, it, it can uh, <laughs> she can get easily upset. When you do not when you do not bring along a greeting card, eh? about that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> how long did, How long did it take you before you understood her love language? I, it, it, it really took me a lot. It, it took me a, a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because of the way I'm probably we were raised up, you know, maybe the environment that we grew up from, we never really get the experience uh, about all these things. Mm. It, it did not and grow up so in the environment really where giving, giving, giving gifts, such gifts regularly was, was practiced. Eh? Yes, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so it, it really took me a, a very long time to understand all this. Yes. Wonderful. And now how does it how does it make you feel to, to know that you finally nailed her love language? <laughs> has it made things better? Has it has it has it made your, your experience a bit better? Oh, praise the Lord, blessed Bishop. I think I did not get the question very well. I'm saying when you when you learned about your spouse's love language, your, your wife's love language, has it made things better for you? Has it changed the, the atmosphere? Has it changed your, your, your relationship? Oh, well, yes, blessed Bishop. Although I know this is not the really the... Uh, 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 Number one love language. I know it's probably the third uh, because I think the first one is uh, quality time and uh, word of affirmation. <laughs> and so I think yes, we we, we are uh, I we ha we are having a great time um, together right now when I've learned all this. Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Once, once you start with quality time, you'll never go wrong. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Indeed. Amen. Anybody who wants to share with us their, their, their love language? Can I, uh, Senior Bishop, just share one yes. example? Mm -hmm. uh, when you spoke about flower, I just remembered one thing. Uh, you know, in Indian tradition, not now, because this modern generation is very different as compared to old and you know, old generation. Mm -hmm. So my mother and father, they are old. My father is 69 and my mother is 57. Yes. So um, in our tradition, Indian tradition, woman as a wife, you know, she should not speak like they have, uh, uh, like how to say, and they don't have a voice to be very frank in those olden days. Yeah. And we had some very, very ridiculous, very nonsense rituals where uh, it was called sati. Where if the husband dies, the woman has to be thrown in fire after that. Wow. So 
all these things were happening. If the husband dies, even the woman has to die. It was like this. But thanks, you know, the British came with their rules. <laughs> they <laughs> so thank God they have they uprooted all these things. Uh, so something good came out of the slavery also. So yes, coming back to the point. Um, when I came to Jesus, now this is a really good example also. When I came to Jesus, I was so much touched by the word of God. And I said, the word of God says, honor your mother and father. So I was like, wow, that's so powerful. And my whole character changed because I was a worldly person dishonoring my father and mother, not respecting my brothers and sisters. And then all of a sudden, everything changed. So I started honoring people. Then after the service, the church service, I thought, okay, um, there was one flower shop. I said, I will take it for my mother today. Today, I will take this flower and close her eyes from back and put it on her hair on from behind. Because Indian uh, women, they always wear this flower thing, you know, if the husband gives them to, her, to them. So if you see women wearing flower from behind, like a wrapped circle, it means that the husband has given to that woman. So I just took the flower for, for my mother and I ran and then, you know, closed her eyes and put this nice, like a garland, you know, like flower type yeah. on her head. Oh, Senior Bishop Julius, her expression. She, first of all, she became angry with my father. <laughs> She said, never in, your, in, never in our life, you know, marriage life, you ever did this to me. I was expecting all these things, you know. You never showed me this kind of love. Oh, everything just came out. And then she started, you know, saying, thank you, my son. Thanks, I love you, all these things. So it's like, you know, so much was hidden within her heart and she doesn't have a mouth to speak. But finally she spoke. Mm. And she just came out, or everything just came out. So my father was angry on me also, I guess, <laughs> but he was not showing. <laughs> yes, just a you know, sharing example, nice. at least to flower. So, 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 so your mother really appreciated that, that simple gesture of, um, of receiving the flower. Yes, so every <laughs> Sunday after the church, I used to buy flower for her and put every like Sunday. So my, I guess my father was very angry on me from inside. No. Yes, it's these little things that that, that, that that transform the atmosphere of marriage, isn't it? You know, sometimes we don't we don't need to do uh, gymnastics, marriage gymnastics, to do over the moon, over the top sort of exercises to win our spouse's favor. It's just these simple uh, acts of uh, appreciation, which changes the atmosphere, which transforms everything. Isn't it? Praise the Lord, Amen. Uh, Amen. Senior Bishop. Amen. Yes. Jacqueline. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. As for me, I think that uh, for women, ladies, all these uh, uh, receiving gifts is very, very important mm. for most of the ladies I know because uh, it's also depending on the culture, but women appreciate more things like. Uh, receiving gifts and uh, spending more time as in with 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 each other mm -hmm. like quality time mm -hmm. i think for women quality time is important and then the second one is this uh, mm -hmm. receiving gifts because it actually changes even the moods it changes even everything because i've seen men who they don't even have time for their women they're so busy yeah. but what they do is just to send a gift they're yeah. just like don't worry don't, i'm going somewhere but uh, something is coming for you there's a surprise you see yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, they, then uh, in their absence, they surprise the woman with the, the gift. And mm -hmm. you see that the woman will be really okay so long as it's something that she likes. Yes. So this thing, I think it works miracles for, 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 for ladies just to receive a gift from a loved one. And then you'll talk of uh, quality time. So I say, you know, there's, uh, it, it's 50, 50 between quality time and, and this gift. Mm -hmm. So... Normally, people use it also, like I've said, they use even these sending gifts now to, to replace that time they should have spent with, with the person. Mm. 
Mm. And it still works to some extent, according to what I've seen and according to the discussions I've had also with my friends. Mm -hmm. So as for men, I think uh, what really makes them happy is this uh, quality time and, uh, and touch. Well, yes. This uh, physical, yes. physical physical touch. touch. That's it. Yeah. I think for men, these are the, the most, uh, according to what I've seen, these are the most uh, important uh, languages of love that they understand. Physical touch, words of, of appreciation, mm -hmm. <laughs> words of affirmation, sorry, words of affirmation, physical touch, and yes, some quality time, but most, more especially the, and, 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 and a number of them acts of service. You find uh, some guys, they want, they do want their wives to cook for them. They do want their wives to do, uh, what's the word? Laundry for them to do it. Acts of service around the house for them to serve them, mm. <laughs> and they feel yeah, like that a one, king mm. in the house. Yes, <laughs> that one also from different cultures. Like for example, an African man, a typical African man from Africa, mm. they know like uh, a woman once you're married, they, that is the end of your laundry uh, work. That is the end of your cooking. That is yeah. the end of your cleaning the house and all these things. But uh, <laughs> if you look, for example, at the European kind of setup, yes. uh, it is not like that. The man and the woman, they share these responsibilities together. Yes. So when a European man marries, they don't marry somebody to come and care for, for the house. Mm -hmm. They marry just somebody for quality time, for companionship most of the time. For companionship, eh? Yes. So... I don't know about the Indian people, how their, their own setup is, because I just understand the African and the European kind of setup in this way, that, as in uh, uh, rega in regards to quality, uh, to this time, uh, how do you call it? Uh, service, I mean service, yeah. receiving uh, acts of service. Mm. I don't know how the Asians do it in the acts of service there, because for Africans, once you are married, like from my area, if you marry, if even they see a man trying to wash clothes, they will be like, eh, what is happening in this house? <laughs> <laughs> the whole society will begin, will start talking. <laughs> and, and you will not hear the end of it. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, this woman is not a good woman. How can she come and she, she lets the man is washing the clothes, you know? Mm -hmm. It will really be something that the whole village even can talk about. <laughs> First, Jacqueline, in Indian tradition, we call them a prisoner. <laughs> a husband who is a prisoner of his wife. When, when you see the man washing clothes and dishes, so for them, it gives him that. It's like a shocker. Like, whoa, 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 what's going on? The first thing you enter, what's going on in this house? You, you are, are you in a prisoner house? <laughs> but things are changing now. Anyway. Indeed, indeed, things are changing. Uh, but you see, we have to find uh, treasure. We have to, <clears throat> these are the things that, that transform our marriages indeed. Yeah? We have to <clears throat> identify our spouse's love languages and, and learn to meet that need and learn to speak that language. Yeah? And, uh, and, 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 and there are a few women out there whose love language is also acts of service. And they feel very much love when the husband takes out the dishes, when the husband makes the bed, when the husband makes some of these uh, <clears throat> chores at, ho at home. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so we have to learn to, to identify each other's love language and, and speak that and practice that. It will surely transform our relationships. Uh, when shortly after we got married, I realized that, of course, my wife's love language is, is quality time, but also gifts, receiving gifts. It's also her, um, her love language. I think second, is it second? Last? Well, once I forgot our birthday, our, not birthday, but what was that? anniversary. And she was upset. She was not very happy with me. It was her birthday. Yes. Our first, <laughs> in our first year of marriage, I forgot, I forgot about her birthday and I didn't buy her a birthday card and she was very upset. Um, and that was a learning curve. 
<laughs> and so it does change. It does change things, transform things. And so from that moment on, was it from that moment on? I was always buying her nice flowers. Now when we're in Moscow, flowers are so easy to get there. And she was always appreciate the flowers, and put them in water. And <laughs> It changes. It really changes our relationship and uh, <clears throat> makes it more lovely. Amen. <laughs> what I think, I think that it's really as well more that what which season you are in. For example, for me, <clears throat> there was a time when when I like to receive gifts, mm -hmm. but right now everything changed and the gifts are in the last. Uh, <laughs> so. Actually, it depends really because uh, you change, you grow, yeah. and the circumstances change. And for example, when you're like uh, busy, you know, so you want that your husband would, you know, show acts of service. Mm -hmm. But when you're not so busy, you know, and you can be at home and make it yourself, and then you want gifts, you know, so. So it changes really from the, from season to season, I guess as well. And we need to really see which seasons we are, and and be like really conscious about Amen. this as well. There, there is also the element of uh, being self. What is the word? Selfless. There's also the element of uh, just being selfless and seeking to serve your spouse. I think that is really at the heart of the, uh, of the love languages because um, we need to be, uh, we, need, we need to have the, to be on a co constant sort of pursuit to serve our spouses, to seek our spouses good, to, um, yes, to find out how can I serve my wife uh, in this circumstance, in this situation. How can I serve my uh, husband? With that, with that attitude, um, I think sometimes even if the, 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 the act that you do, it may not be your spouse's primary love language, it's still going to, um, to speak volume to them. Amen. Uh, always seeking to do all those small, small things here and there. They transform our marriages. Like now, for me, for us here, we are here in in, uh, in Namibia. We don't have flower shops anymore here, but then you find another way. So indeed, it's, it's not always the same. It's not always that you have to be doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, depending on the circumstance, depending on the season, as you said, Kinga. Yes, you could always find something different, something new, to. Uh, to show your spouse appreciation and love and, uh, and to show them that uh, you, they are always on your mind. Amen. Any, anybody who want, would like to share their love language experience? Love language experience. I, I just you want to... oh, Okay. Please go ahead. is the best because you can just give a gift a gift and sorry sister Teresa can and, you please repeat yes I'm saying this like uh, mm. something is not the, right. you don't have you don't have time with your family mm. or Uh, it's a problem with the network. One of my, okay. Uh, you, you can try again, or maybe you can write, you can type. I can read it out for you. Uh, maybe I can contribute as she's writing. Yes. I can also add that uh, these uh, love languages, sometimes people also use them to cover up uh, the deficiencies that are in the marriage. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, we should also see in what context they come, you see? Mm. Like, what is the motive behind all this? Because I've seen also some women that are, their husbands are really, really um, violent mm. and the husbands are beating them thoroughly. You know, this beating, serious beating. But mm. then after this beating, the husband knows exactly what she likes. So after this beating, the next day she, she receives this thing that she likes, you mm. see? Just to, then she will be silent then she'll be quiet and she'll be happy with that thing. And people are like, why, you know, why do you tolerate all this? You know, this is time to come out of this marriage. This is time to, to, to you know, to give it at least uh, a, 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 some, some time. This is time to separate and go and think a bit. But you will see them still uh, sticking around because of that thing that was given to them, mm. you see, as a love language. Yes. So, for a, so this thing is, you have to look at, you know, how is it coming? What is the motive of doing this? Because I think for us here, yeah, the motive of all this is just to better the marriage, just mm -hmm. to make it even better, just to, to bring that glow in the marriage, that spark that, that we really want to keep throughout the marriage. Yes. So that, is, that should be our motive. That is what mm -hmm. I want to add. Amen. Because you find, like, for example, your husband is very busy, he's busy going to business trips, he's busy doing, going here, going there. But just to blind you, you'll just say, okay, look, go and check your account. Go and check your account before you, you talk again. And then you'll see us drop their money for you. And you're like, okay, even if it's not here, money is here in the account. I can do all the shopping that I want. <laughs> so, so this one, we don't still feel the void that is missing, you know, the husband's presence that is missing in the home. Mm, yeah. So uh, let us be very careful not to use this... Uh, love languages to cover our deficiencies or the problems that are there in our marriages. But on the other hand, let us use them to really make our marriages better. That is what uh, my addition to this. I mean, that's a very good, that's a very good point there, Pastor Jacqueline. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost like, uh, indeed, some people use uh, as a, uh, the, love, the love languages as a form of manipulation. Indeed, we need to be careful against that. To, to guard out against that, and that we ourselves don't use that indeed for that purpose. Uh, nothing can substitute for good communication in marriage. Yeah. And, and indeed, if we try to use the love language as a way of um, manipulating our spouse, it's, it's just making a, a bad problem worse. Because eventually we will have to address the real situation, the real problem in the marriage, and uh, and as you said, indeed, the, the love language is supposed to just aid us to be our aid to help better our marriages and not as a, as a cover up and not as something that we, we, we use up as a camouflage to, 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 to see if things are well when they are not, when they are not well. So we have to come out of, um, we have to stop being lazy <laughs> and we have to invest a lot in our marriages. Uh, and not just use gifts as a as a way of uh, whitewashing things. Very very true. And we'll need serious communication. Communication also becomes a very important thing. It must always be carried out. If there is if there is a problem in marriage, it must be communicated. There must be serious communication and and problem solving, rather than just uh, relying on the love language magic <laughs> or tricks tricks of love language amen uh, amen praise the lord senior bishop yes city of <clears throat> yeah um i also just want to to add on the emphasis of uh, pastor jacqueline mm -hmm. uh that it indeed very true we need to be very careful and uh, especially Manipulation. Yes. I know that things happen, and then, um, as it is said, that uh, sometimes the love language you might turn it into manipulating your spouse for you to get away with some certain things. Uh, it is really, you know, it is really a time that we become very realistic with uh, yourself, because this also has to do with your eternity. Let us not forget. Uh, I remember very well when the most senior Archbishop Dr. Makwengo was giving us the discipleship and they say that um, 
there is no one that you can tend to at this hour than your wife. If you want to do a spiritual audit, you want to audit your, yourself to see whether are you really right with the Lord? Are you really standing well? Uh, I think really that uh, at times we need to sit down. At times we really need to sit down with our spouses and yourself. Be very realistic with yourself. As we spoke about being humble in the beginning, that you need to humble yourself. Accept that you are wrong. If your spouse tells you that, no, this is your problem, this is uh, what I see, then I think that is a good place. That is a good place. That is love indeed, for you to begin correcting yourself, working on yourself as well. Yes, indeed. Um, in marriages, you'll find whereby, you know, me as a husband, I know what my love, what my wife actually loves. And uh, for me now, when I have done something wrong, when I want to get out away with this, I will, I will turn that love language now into using it a tool for, you know, a tool for manipulation, which is really, really very wrong. And uh, let me also mention a little bit about myself. Um, I myself, uh, when it comes on, uh, of course, my, 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 my love language is what I actually, uh, my love language is uh, words of affirmation. Yes, that one is very, very important to me. Uh, and, uh, and the other one is gift. It's not really a gift. Yeah, but what I struggle most to really accomplish my wife, I, I've, I've identified, of course, it took me time. For me, it took me time really to, to identify my wife's love language. And uh, we've been married ever since 2016. But I think it's only last year only last year when I came to discover, you know, that. So you can imagine how much I've been depriving of my wife. <laughs> yes. So it, 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 it took me, it took me really uh, three years to identify my wife's love language. And uh, I'm really trusting the Lord and I'm really working on it that I may make her a happy woman. Amen. 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 Yes, that I may, I, I may really make her joy full because it, it, it's really important that the really one uh, pays attention to those uh, little, little things that we think they are little, but they are very important to one because in marriage, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, you know, endure marriage. We have to enjoy marriage. That is the reason why we got married so that you can, uh, you know, be happy. Yeah. Be happy. We're looking for something and... Uh, uh, of course, now that you found it, so don't make things uh, difficult. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that it's really very much important that uh, we pay attention to some of the things we do in marriage, especially manipulation and stuff, uh, things like that. So it's time really that we make sure to everything that we do, there is a right motive, a pure motive, yes. not with some other you know, wrong motive. It is really very much evil. And uh, once you really you analyze yourself, whether you are a husband, whether you are a wife, once you analyze yourself, you examine yourself, you find out that, no, I'm being this just because of this. If it is not right, I think we should just repent immediately. Also for the sake of your eternity. Yes. Yes, that is what I wanted to contribute. Amen. <clears throat> And uh, we have to remember that, uh, indeed, we, need to, we, we really need to have a balance of the love languages in our marriages. Uh, if, 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 your, if your wife's love language is uh, um, quality time, it does not mean that the other things are insignificant. We need to have a healthy balance of the five love languages. I think every marriage needs quality time. Every husband and wife needs quality time. Every husband and wife needs acts of service. Every husband and wife needs words of affirmation. Every husband and wife needs, you know, uh, physical touch and gift giving of, to some degree. And so we need to learn to invest in all these in our marriage for a sort of holistic approach and um, so that we do not deprive each other. And yes, 
just wanted to add that. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, uh, my question is, you find that uh, sometimes there are some people that need one uh, love language yes. more than the rest. Like, uh, let's say you have children and you have also a husband, you know? And you find that some, you know, the children already when they come into the marriage, or, or, or the scene, you know, the scene uh, becomes different because they want a lot of attention. The child is crying for attention. The child wants this, the child wants the other. So it changes the setup how it used to be. Yes. And now you have also, uh, there are some partners that also crave too much attention. You see? So you are one person, the husband wants too much time. The child wants too much time. Now what, what can you do in this context really? Because sometimes it becomes a challenge. Thank you. I guess that's assuming now that um, your, your, your spouse works, works while you are, let's say if you're the wife, you are a housewife while your husband goes to work and you're at home with the kids, right? That's the sort of setup that is there, right? Where when the husband comes home, he's demanding your attention. When the kids are at home, they demand your attention. Is that the sort of setup? Yes, something like this, for example. Mm. Yes. Well, I think there's uh, two people fi fighting for attention at the same time in this case. <laughs> okay, let, let me hear let me hear our colleagues. What are their input? What do you guys what do you guys say? What 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 should a woman do in, in a situation like that? The husband is demanding attention here, the children are demanding attention. How should she handle such a situation? I think, uh, uh, Pastor Alice, yes, Pastor Alice, you're saying? Can you hear me? Yeah, your voice is low. Uh, you may have to change oh. the microphone. Put it closer to the mouth or something. What about now? Okay, that's better. Okay, that's better. Okay. I would say take care of the children because, um, it's really important in their developmental status, well-being, mental well-being. Um, a child, um, I'd say like an adult can handle it much better than a child. Yeah. If, if, if they don't receive attention. Did you hear me? Yes, you're saying that uh, the, 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 the much attention should be paid to the children rather than to their husband because the children uh, cannot handle the rejection as much as adults can, right? Amen. Amen. Pastor Samuel, what did you want to say? Yes, I wanted to share one uh, real life example wherein one of the pastors shared with me. He said that I was leaving for a meeting, meeting early morning. Meeting means uh, it was a prayer meeting. And his flight was around 10 a.m. So he has to leave his house by 7, 6.30 a.m. in the morning. And so that's the time when even kids go for school. So he got up and he was just looking at his wife because he was packing his bag, everything was packed. And he was just about to leave the house. So he sat down on a table looking for a food or, say, or thinking that his wife will come and just sit and you know, talk with him because he's leaving. He's leaving to another state. So he was thinking about that, but he was just waiting for five minutes, 10 minutes, and nothing happened. No, you know, uh, his wife didn't came to the table, neither she gave food <laughs> to the husband and the husband left, the pastor left in anger because wife was busy with the kids, preparing them for schools and giving them food, but she didn't give to the husband. So the pastor was very angry <laughs> and he went to the, uh, um, I mean, to the airport. So the Lord spoke to him, the Lord said, uh, he was just praying, Lord, please go with me. Please, you know, please go before me. And 
like touch your people and all this stuff. So the Lord said, I'm not going with you. <laughs> so he said, why, why are you not going with me, Lord? What was the problem? What sin I have committed? So the Lord said to him that you are angry with your wife. How can I go with you? You are angry with your wife. So that's, that's the time he repented. And the Lord said to him that straight away you must call your wife and ask for forgiveness. So coming to the conclusion brings of like understand. Kids are not mature. You know, when kids to understand, you need to understand from the kid's perspective also, from the wife's perspective also, how she's handling stuff. So that's how I think. <laughs> You know, it's more of like understanding. And if your husband is behaving like a kid, then I'll probably, uh, you know, give attention to your husband. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Uh, anybody Thank else you. wants to weigh in on this question? What should the wife do? Uh -huh. I, I would like to say then the, the children, they are with the mother when the the husband is not here. Alors, she can give attention to the husband, uh, to the children when the husband is not here. And when the husband come, it should be everybody who turn the, the eyes to the husband. He's the chief of the family. He need uh, attention. And children, they can uh, give attention to the father too. You know, in my home, when my father was coming, he had every time his place, he knew he can sit because the, the place for him was free when he arrived. Already this little data was uh, a sign when we were attending, uh, waiting for him. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank, th thank you, Bishop, Bishop Yvonne, indeed. Uh, that, 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 that's a very good that's a very good one when they, when, they, when the husband is at work attention is paid to the children when the husband comes uh, it should be no brainer there should be no fighting over <laughs> over the attention he should get the attention because he's just come back home and I think that there is need for serious communication in that house yeah if the husband feels like there is no time there is no attention being given to him or the kids and the husband are demanding for attention at the same time from the wife who feels drained, then there is need for communication for, for a sit down. Yeah? Then this husband and wife need some quality time to discuss about how they are going to spend their time together yeah? when he comes home <laughs> and what to do with the kids. Because uh, obviously the, the when the wife is feeling torn between the children and the husband, that's not a good thing. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and of course, the husband needs a lot of attention because sooner or later, the children are going to, as they say, fly away. They're going to build their own nests. And so it will be very important for the husband and wife to always continue uh, an intimate relationship because at the end of it all, they are still going to be, remain, to, make, to be remaining the two of them. And the children are going to go away and start their own families. So it is important that the, that the, that the husband and wife always have their quality time uh, giving each other their attention. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen. Uh, amen. I also want to weigh in. Yes. I also want to contribute there. Um, yes, I also think that there is, there is a serious communication needed there mm -hmm. so that everything may go well in that home and that no one may feel uh, left out uh, or no one may feel deprived. Mm -hmm. So I think in that case whereby uh, the, 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 the husband um, let me say, let me just put it for instance now, the example that, uh, the, the story that uh, Pastor Sanil just gave us. So I think that what the woman supposed to do there, it's, it's, uh, let me say all of them, the husband and the wife, supposed to sit down that, okay, yes, that is, this is now where the communication part really 
plays a very big role, knowing that the husband is traveling tomorrow. So I think that things can be worked out. See how you can give the husband attention before he leaves and plan things in advance. So I think the, the only solution there in that situation is just communication really, to communicate and then uh, try to plan and organize things. I believe that all will be well. Yes, that, that's the only solution I would, uh, I would really advise in that situation that planning and organizing really as husband and wife. So that will be the solution to the predicament in that marriage or home. Amen. 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 Senior Vision. Yes. Yes. I want to add something about uh, what Pastor Jacqueline has said. Yes. Yes. Very recently, I was uh, taught by, in I was in the marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. And we were taught about that uh, family does not include children, but uh, Family consists of husband and wife, and children are just blessings from God. And also, when we look uh, in Malachi 2.14, uh, we say that God is witness uh, our marriage. Yes. And at this, uh, at this uh, situation, it needs time management and uh, also how to plan our work so we may also get get uh, enough time with our sponsors sponsors because maybe you may be busy with children and uh, your work and uh, also it can lead to some uh, a lot of problems he may see like you are ignoring him and also you don't want to pay attention at him so it it is uh, just a, a time management How, and also how you have raised the, the children. Yes, time um, management and how the children are raised, very important. It almost, it almost sounds like the husband is not very much involved too in raising these children. So that must also be addressed. Eh? <laughs> if the mother is the only one who's uh, paying attention to the kids, then I think there is a problem there also. Senior Bishop. Yeah. I just wanted to say hi to baby Luca. Hi, baby Luke. Hello. <laughs> so you. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Powerful baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Bundle of joy. How are you, bundles of joy? <laughs> yeah. he's, he's full of joy. Sophia, did you copy for? Yes, Senior Bishop, how are you? Yes, thank uh, you. Be blessed, everyone. Uh, you. Sorry, because I'm a tweak, I was out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So I just want to contribute about the, about the, uh, how the management of the time, uh, uh, normally the wife is very busy with everyone and to, uh, husband, they need to understand. They need to understand and also must contribute to also, if the wife is busy with kids a certain time, we have also, if we don't have anything to do, then we have also help whatever we can do. So, just a wife, if he's, if a husband is complaining that he's not given a, a, a attention because the mother is ever busy with kids, Lily, you can say that, oh, my wife is busy. The kids are all for all of us. And if they need attention, we need attention all of us, then we must help the kids. Then, he, then later we can give attention to each other later. Yeah, that is only my contribution. And I agree to the small one, to the, <laughs> the small angels. <laughs> Amen. Okay, Amen. bye. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. You are mm. saying the husband mm. must also help with the kids, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, have, you have some men who at home, they want to be treated as the king. Mm. The king so of the house. Nice. He just comes home, sits on the couch, gets his dinner, then goes to bed. 
okay. That sort of setup is not fair. Indeed, husband and wife must uh, work together to raise the children, to take care of the children, uh, to share responsibilities, and also uh, to ensure that one spouse is not overworked. Indeed, it's not, it's not good when the husband is overworked. It's also not good when the wife is overworked. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister Abby. What did you want to say to add? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, I think there should be a balance. And um, this is the time, especially when um, um, the love languages can take a, a very um, strong lead um, in the marriage. Like, for example, like for like a, a newborn, um, you know, on, a, on the mother, it's, it's a lot of stress and um, it's, it's priority to take care of, of a newborn rather than um, like a 12 year old that's you know would be much more easier to handle so in that case like if the love language is like um, words of affirmation or quality time there could um, be like a plan where um, if the baby's sleeping or like to um, like get the in-laws to watch the baby and then like you can have dinner with your husband or you know just like your husband can give you like flowers and stuff just to show appreciation um especially when it comes on to um like raising children raising kids sometimes we drift off like for what um I've seen like we kind of drift off and we kind of you know forget our spouse so it could just be like the simplest things like flowers like the husband can um you know bring flowers just for appreciation um you know for taking care of you know his seed basically <laughs> and the wife can't too the wife can you know like surprise the husband like put something on the husband's car at work um not because everything is so you know could be so consumed with a, a, a newborn it can be like the simplest things and planning also so it would be communication and the love languages being like a very you know playing a very strong role in the the marriage at that point amen indeed uh taking advantage of the love language in order to serve so that's very true uh, and, and, and I think another very important issue is that, uh, that as, as husbands, we have to realize that uh, we must be of the mindset to serve our, our spouses and not just expecting to be served. Amen? We must always be looking for ways to serve our spouses, our wives. Uh, if, if a husband is coming back from work, the wife is overworked. The children, they need a lot of attention. As a husband, you could also look for ways. How can I help my wife in this situation, in this circumstance? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that, that, that should help. That should help a great deal. Amen. All right. Uh, Thank you so much for, for, for your contributions. And I think I think we have come to the end of our to the end of our uh, time together today of our session. <laughs> I think our session has come to an end today. Is there anybody who would like to share something before we, we wrap up? <clears throat> anybody who wants to say to share something? A question to discuss? Before we wrap up, praise the Lord. Bless. Yes. Amen. We have two people there. We have Mr. Uh, Shanika and Tange. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity. I just want also Wayne Leon the 
children, eh, the attention and so on. I think there, when it comes now to ask the children of God, eh, I believe that should not be a problem at all because children now, that, that's it's parenting now because now the children now comes between the two. I think this must be the responsibility of both uh, parents. So for instance, to say if the wife is busy with the kids, then obviously there must be a part that she will need help also on the kids. It cannot be possible that she's busy with the kids and she will not need help. So taking care of the kids, that must be the responsibility of both. And let me say, if she is busy with the kids, then all of you must be busy with the kids. There must be something that is being done, maybe washing the kids, maybe preparing them for something. So that's just a, another responsibility in the marriage. So if she's busy with the kids, maybe preparing them for school or washing them, then maybe the father is busy preparing something for them to eat. Just so to say, amen. amen. So as children of God, really, when it comes to the kids, that must not be a problem to us. To say, maybe the husband to say, no, the wife is just busy with the kids, not giving me attention. I think they, they, they both must be busy bees when it comes to the kids. Amen. 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 Indeed. They should finish with the kids and then they move on to another task that need to be done in the in the in, in the home amen, amen. Of course, they should do almost uh, they should do everything together taking care of the kids it, it must be done together just as any other things that must be done together in the in the marriage amen. Amen. however it comes also with the background of uh growing up culture and so on some some people especially mostly in developing countries, let me say Africa, where strongly culture is uh, believed to be, to be dominating in most parts. You see, when you, the background where you uh, grew up, we have not known that. Maybe you grew, you grew up in a homestead where a man is always sitting there, or there are some, some, some work that are referred only for women and so forth. You grew up in that homestead, in such type of environment. So it requires you to put more effort to remove that mentality from yourself. When you grow up now and you become a Christian now, a Christ follower now, there are some things that you have adapted in your past life. So it requires effort to get rid of them and uh, do the right thing. Amen. Amen. I hope oh, I'm, I'm being understood what I'm trying to explain. Very, very, very clear. Somebody else wanted to contribute? Amen. Praise the Lord, Senior Bishop. Amen. <clears throat> uh, mine is just an encouragement that uh, I, I don't think I don't think to for us to achieve success in the five love languages it, 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 it will take just one month or so on. Of course, maybe there are some that it might be it, it it might be very easier for them to achieve, but to some it might really be you know it might require time, and therefore my encouragement is just that we should communicate more often, and if there is maybe any anybody that doesn't know the spouse love language, I think it should be it should be our assignment really in order for us to make sure we know what is my wife's love language in order that I may do things uh, accordingly and not only doing as long as. So I think we should really invest more time in really finding out what is it that makes my wife happy? What, re what is it really that uh, makes her feel a wife in this home that gives her joy and really just spend more time and really effort in order for us to make sure that we are really achieving that and that we find success in that area. So that is just my encouragement. Even as I, I'm also trusting the Lord that um, the Lord may help me to do more in my marriage 
that I will make my marriage a happy home. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think uh, for me as a husband, as a father, I'm always looking for ways. How can I help my wife at home? How can I uh, help with taking care of the child? And I think <laughs> and I think and I think that's the way it should go really yeah we should be uh, we should be looking for ways to help one another and assist one another in every in all the stuff at home especially when the kids are involved Amen. all right uh, I'm going to ask somebody to pray for us to close down for us may I ask uh, Bishop, Bishop Yvonne do you mind do you mind to pray for us, Bishop Yvonne? Yes, Bishop Yvonne. Thank you. Thank you very much Amen. to give me this privilege. Mighty, mighty Lord. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much Amen. to give me to give us this opportunity to talk with each other about this big question of marriage. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for your word who instructed us about that. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who helped us in all situations. Thank you to be able to communicate with each other. Thank you, mighty, mighty Lord, for oh, who you are. Thank you to help us in the house of each other, each of us. Thank you, thank you, mighty Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Very powerful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, by the grace of God, if if our lockdown continues in Namibia, we shall meet again next Saturday. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If the, if the lockdown is lifted, then we will we'll see which day we shall meet again. I, th I thank everybody for, for, for fellowshipping with us today. Uh, I pray that uh, we are all blessed in one way or another. And uh, we shall meet again in our next fellowship. Amen. And thank you so much, Senior Bishop Yvonne, and uh, everybody, Pastor Jacqueline, Pastor Shanika, uh, Pastor Sanil, Ovasia Malia, thank you. Everybody, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. shalom. Again in due course. Amen. Thank Amen. you so Amen. much, Senior Bishop Julius. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bishop Bibi. Amen. Thank you, Senior Bishop. Thank you very much for your precious time and uh, very beautiful fellowship with the Blessed Sea. Thank you and spasibo. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Spasiba, blessed Bishop. <laughs> Spasiba. We learn from Crawford. Merci beaucoup. Merci.